E36, I'm filtered. AKA the unfiltered room with Mr. E. Gray. Introducing all the latest names and the latest news. How this take, he the new face, yeah, the new sound, but keep it old school. Raw interviews from local athletes, he even digging off an entertainment too. Own style, he got his own lane, it's all filtered out, but keep it raw, man. New content to keep the people ready. E36, no Jerome Bates. E. Gray on the E36 Unfiltered Live podcast. I am your host. I excuse you guys. You know, the technology still acting a little crazy, so I didn't know for sure was I actually live, but I see that we are <laughs> on here live. So once we get things going here, I want to make sure everybody give you a second to jump in uh, so we can definitely give you guys a, the time to everybody come in and come in and, and, and make all this good stuff happen. While you're coming in, make sure, again, make sure you hit the like button, the share button. Again, Hit the like button, the share button if you're on here. Also, let me know where you're coming in from your location. Also, tag E36. Just tag E36, getting this thing going. Last but not least, we also accepting donations for the platform at for cash out at money sign E36 unfiltered. Again, that is cash sign E36 unfiltered. Now, without further ado, we're not going to take no more time. Uh, I'm excited about this. By this guest we got on this show, um, I was actually introduced to him by a mutual friend, which is my family member, uh, Pat Jamar. And when he shot me the link of this dude singing, when I heard this dude sing, I said, what? Who is, what is this? Like, what? This is crazy. So anyway, without further ado, we have on the platform, American Idol, season 16 contestant. Unbelievable talented from staying in the state of Alabama, Dem- uh, Dominique Posey. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. How about you? How about you? I'm doing great, man. No complaints. First of all, I always tell my guests, I thank you for taking time out of your day to come onto the platform uh, and, and take your time, man, and show all your gifts and your talent, man, and share your stories because you can be doing plenty of other things right now, like being in the studio or just whatever, you know, kicking the lounge, you know, doing what you love to do. But again, I appreciate you for coming on the platform to get you rolling, all right? Yeah, no doubt. Thanks for having me, too. I, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So without further ado, as I said, we're going to get this thing up and rolling. Let's start here with some questions about you so they can kind of know about who you are. You are just, just unbelievably talented uh, and many gifts here. First of your singing. So tell us about your singing. How did you, who, who first introduced you, who or what introduced you to the, to the music singing and, and singing from an early age? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, for most of us, you know, just kind of keep it cultural. Most black folks, we started singing in the church when we were children. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, singing around the house, my mom, she sang, she still sings today, Karen Bryant, you okay. know, she sings music out and everything. Um, so she was singing in churches and doing gigs and things like that. My dad has always been a really big music buff. So he always had me studying people like Whitney and Donnie and, you know, wow. Sam Cooke and Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett, like, Dudes like that from a young age had me, you know, like I'm in elementary school walking down the hall singing, you know, <laughs> Sam Cooke and stuff like that. Wasn't nobody on that but me. Yeah, I was yeah. the eyeball. So that's always been me, just kind of, you know, deep diving into the records, you know, deep cuts and things like that. Um, then I kind of took it on my own in school, going into choirs and start singing in different choirs and making groups at church. And then I went from, um, from doing that, I started marching in the band as well. Okay, yeah, okay. For a little bit, um, did the choir there. Then after that, you know, I just kind of just played around with the music thing. And then I got to Birmingham because I'm, I'm actually from Atlanta, so. Yes, yes. Now, but yes. you did, the, yeah. now I can say this real quick, you did what most, that's like the opposite move. Most people trying to right. move from right. Atlanta to Atlanta. You moved from Atlanta <laughs> to Birmingham right. uh, quickly. You got to go ahead. How did that happen? What, what was that, that decision and what brought about that? <laughs> Well, I was kind of in between two different life decisions. Um, I was considering going to the military. I was kind of like, you know, pretty much dipped in, honestly. And I just, I really didn't know if I was still going to go or not, if I wanted to stay or whatever. So I came to Birmingham at my grandmother's encouragement. You know, they always know what to say to get you where they want you to be. So <laughs> my grandma, she, you know, she's been trying to get me to Birmingham for years. So she finally got me here. You know, she was feeding me all this good food and I ah. some, a good job and made some friends and, you know, started having a life, been involved in the music scene and 
when they called me and was like, you know, hey, it's time for you to go, I was like, eh, you know what I'm saying? I can, <laughs> I'll pass. And mm. I really can't say I regret the decision, honestly. It's, I know you, like like we said, you know, a lot of folks go from Birmingham to Atlanta, but yes. it, it, it's it's worked for me, you know? So Okay, you know what, and that scene, I'm sorry, I got a little, a little net flying around here real quick. <laughs> <But anyway. laughs> so I, I, you know what, that's, it's kind of ironic you say that. So how old were you when you moved into, uh, to Birmingham, Mr. Fahon? I was just about to turn 21. So I was 20. Wow, okay. I was going to turn 21 in April. Okay. This, so, and that's, that's, this is 2000, uh, November of 2011 is when I got here. Wow, wow. And fell in love. You know what? And the people do regret it all, better yet, overlook the music scene that is around here in Birmingham, Birmingham area, get the plum bar. I mean, right. you got so many, some people say holes in the wall, different spots where it's unbelievable talent around that you can just get up and gig. And it's, and it's actually a, a culture for music uh, right. in Birmingham. That's, that's right. a lot of people may not even know and overlook it. So, I mean, and, plus, a lot of people don't know. Yeah. A lot of people don't, lot of people don't know. And, and, and one thing that I'm afraid of happening, like, like you mentioned that culture, it was really important to me that I got the respect of big people who were already doing it in the city. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I, when, I, when I first learned about like, you know, Plum Bar, I, I think the first time I went was on a Saturday. Fly Dave was, you know, shout out to Fly Dave. He was doing um, live open mics on Saturday at that point. Mm -hmm. I think I sang two songs that night and then I never sang again. And then they randomly somebody took me to, um, a former coworker of mine took me to when we were doing open mics down there, Legends. Yes, yes, yeah. Sang, and I sang down there, and that was where it kind of just, you know, people were kind of taking notice of me, like, oh, hey, who is this? Where he come from? What's that? Exactly. But, but it was people who I had been seeing, sing and perform for years, like Sharon Collins, Logan the Entertainer, uh, Reggie Archie, Young Vocals, Sherry Brown, you know, mm -hmm. and the different musicians that I got the chance to play with, and it was just great. They, I actually had to cut my teeth in front of these people and grow yes. up in the culture, Fast. you know what I'm saying? And that that was that was really important to me. A lot of people don't know that Birmingham has that, but we we got that. <laughs> oh yeah, in, in a major scale, bringing it. So now when you go from there, you uh, and I love to talk about people's journey to getting what they got. How did you first even get introduced to? Because uh, now you got into the music scene, you 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 perform in different places. How much do you feel that that was such a pivotal foundation for you? Becoming to, to you moving to eventually to American Idol and even more so what you're doing now. How how important was that 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 stage? That was very important. Honestly, it was <laughs> it was real important. I learned a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Professionalism, uh, understanding my own vocal boundaries mm. for how long I'm gonna be singing. Like, cause you know me. If you if you've ever seen me perform, like once I hit the stage, yeah, you all in. It's I'm all in. Like I don't even know. It's like it's like if you see somebody running full speed for a for, for a full marathon. That's how it feels. <laughs> and then I'm not stopping. I'm not. I'm not pumping no brakes. Well, yeah. sometimes that's not the best idea because you you know your your body is still a muscle that's got to handle what you're doing. So truth, truth. I learned a lot of lessons in that phase of my life, and I'm I'm still do, I'm still gigging. I'm still grinding on a gig scene and things like that, as well as doing my own thing. But I'm still learning those lessons and applying those lessons to this day that I picked up back then. Okay, I got you. So let's start smooth now into the progression of you, because again, I love the journey. I love people bringing, the, who, bringing people onto the platform that I knew have a journey, because mm -hmm. we see you, American Idol, boom! But <laughs> that wasn't your first, you had the American Got Talent, didn't yeah. make it, then uh, The Voice, was it The Voice as well? The Voice as well. Didn't make it, but a third time clearly was a charm for you. Mm -hmm. So for that, <laughs> tell me, tell me, take through those processes, man. How that worked, and wh why was that important for you to to use that as an avenue to? I ain't gonna say, I'm not gonna use a word to say to uh, to kind of qualify you, but why was that such a drive? And what did those 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 failures at that time, or or not succeeding like you wanted to do for you to get to American Idol? Um, you know, to be honest, I don't think anybody's ever asked me that question. So shout okay, out to you. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, the doing the shows period, it was just something that was it was it just it only made sense. Mm -hmm. 
you don't really know a lot of times exactly how to get your foot in the door, how to be yeah. seen, how to be heard, how to meet people, how to get in certain rooms. Or so you know, okay, well, if I get on this show, there's a great chance, you know, if I if I do my best, or if if it's worth anything, if 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 I give anything to it, you know, what yeah. I'm saying I'll make it far enough, somebody will see something, you know. Huh. That's your hope. That's your dream. So that's why I went for the show. Just because I didn't really have any other avenue in my brain of okay, well, okay, well, go here, audition here. Okay, well, audition for this person. Send them this. Do this on this. Yes. You know, there's no steps to it. You have to just yeah. kind of throw your noodles at the wall and see what stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. Right. So for America's Got Talent, that was pretty big. Just because um, it was the first time that I'd ever done anything like that. Mm. So I really enjoyed the process of, you know, going online, registering, showing up, waiting in line, getting my ticket. I met Funny Man there. And he was okay. like, he was like, man, if I had known you was here, because he seen me at Legends before, I think, at that time. Okay. If I had, was here, bro, I brought you to the front of the line. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was cool That's... just to, you know, have to still go through the process and then get yes. up there and then sing better than anybody did anything in the room and then still get told no. <laughs> mm, okay, so that's so what I can get fine. to. I can get to like saying, so how, how did you how did you feel you did? Like, you know, like they I, I killed the game. They kind of played me, but that's all right, you know. Uh, I know that I could have been strong now that I'm older and now that I know what I can do, I know that I could have been stronger, but mm -hmm. I still know that no matter who was in that room, they wasn't touching me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not even being cocky, I'm just saying. Yes, you gotta have that. You gotta have that confidence. Do, do you think the nerves kind of got best of you? The, the the big the stage of the moment for those 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 initial uh, uh, trials that you went through with the American Got Talent and all that. So it was kind of oh, damn, it's kind of overwhelming. And therefore, you quite sometimes the nerves can get best of you, and you can't put forth your your best effort all the way like you wanted to. To leave, be like, God dang it, I know I could have done this or I could have done that. So that, that, that kind of supported your experience. That's how I felt about the voice. Mm -hmm. America Got Talent, I just kind of, I think it was my first time, so maybe the nerves to get the best of me. With the yeah. boys, we got a chance to stand in the room. They had like maybe five lines of 10 people going back. Okay. And so each line was step forward, and you had like they sing for the judges right there, and then like they just pick whoever, and they, you know, take you back. But, and so you got a chance to really kind of hear and listen to who was going and who was getting, you know, cut off. Yeah. You couldn't tell what they were going for. So I think that kind of threw me off because I kind of was cycling through like three or four different songs in my head. Okay, yeah. sing this, sing this, sing it. And when I got up there, I don't remember what it was that I sang, but it just was like, I know I killed it, but it probably yeah. was like, that's not what they're looking for. If I had sang, so that's why I was like, when I left, I was like, if I had sang this, it would have been this. If I sang that, it would have been Yeah, this. it always goes back into that mind. Like, oh, gotcha, did this, did that. And you know, and the crazy thing about that is that, because, uh, also, with this platform, I do a 30 second filter. I'm also an actor, a professional okay. sound actor. So I can't tell you how many auditions I went into. And I'm like, yo, that's best for this role. But I'm like, you <laughs> never know. It's going to be a thousand and one reasons why they didn't quite pick you. Right. And that's where the battle comes in in your mind to be like, okay, may, yes, I got to continue to get better and perfect my skill, but I got to be, I got to pick. This is a very important one. I'm sure you can relate with this one. Is Pick your, make your choice and stand in it. Yes. So whatever song, your, yes. your, 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 how you're right. going to stand, ever you got to do it. And you got, cause they, they can see that confidence or they can see that unwavering to go and go on back and forth plays a major role. So yes, I understand that. That's true. That's Did true. you have any particular, let's look into, do you have any particular uh, techniques that you, you gather like prior to the night or some, what's some of the weirdest stuff that you saw people doing to try to prepare to go on to the stage and also some of the major breakdowns that you probably saw if you can remember honestly the weirdest breakdown that i saw there was a girl who she was doing i wish i, could, I don't want to curse but she was doing amazing like she was killing the competition this is at american idol during hollywood week okay She's killing it we are on what is that maybe Thursday night, which is like the mm -hmm. last night before the final cuts on Friday. Oh, wow. She advances through that that round that night, and then she tells them that she doesn't want to do it. What? Why? <laughs> like, she just quits, and she won't, she won't tell anybody a reason. She just says, I don't want to do it. And everybody's looking at her like, what? Wait. 
Oh, what? You mean, you mean uh, to tell me you made it this far out of hundreds of thousands of people? You made it to this moment and decided you don't want to do it? <laughs> Make absolutely no sense. Like, he's like, wait, hold up. What are you, what are you saying? Oh, hold on, Jake. I'm sorry. I got a issue going. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, I was saying, like, we were looking at her like, what's, what's crazy? Why would you do that? And I don't, I don't, I, I think they had to, because they were sending people home to the, like, to the airplanes that night. Mm. So by the time she got through and decided that she didn't want to do it, people were already at the airport. Wow. So they had to bring somebody so back. They were trying, they were, they were, they were scrambling trying to decide who to bring back. I don't even, I don't even remember who it was, if it was anybody. But that was the craziest thing in the world to me. Like, why would you get that far and decide that you don't want to do it? But I can respect it, though. I have to respect it. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least she, you know, she, she, I don't know, was it the nerves? Or she's like, you know what, this is not what I thought it was going to be or right. whatever have you. But, hey, you made it. So she saw something. Something she saw, something she felt, spoke to her and said, hey, nah, I'm, I'm good. So, well, you right about that. So now, without further ado, and I'm sorry, you guys, I keep on just net that just got in here, just kind of going crazy on me. But anyway, <laughs> what we're going to do here, we're going to wait no longer. We're going to actually let the audience see what you did on that stage here. Uh, and this was, this was one of the performance where it was very iconic. I'm going to share the screen so everybody can be able to see it. This was one of his first performances that I can think of. It was on there. Can't nobody. Uh, when I say my man went in, <laughs> he went in. So without further ado, check him out. My man, Dominique Posey. Let's <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> And first and foremost, wow. <laughs> and there it is. There oh. it is. My man came in and did the thing, killed it. I mean, there it is, man. How, how's it feel watching that again, seeing that one more time? It feels a lot different. Okay, like so. <laughs> What's that? I said it feels a lot different now that it's so long ago. Now I now I can watch it and really enjoy what I did and mm. not picking it apart. I feel good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would have voted so, for me. So early on, you really couldn't. You was kind of like, ah, yeah, um, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was too fresh. It was like afterwards, it was too fresh. Like until almost until this year, it was too fresh. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. So that what I'm hurt, man. I can't. I can't lie. That thing hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so now this one's. This was the one you. You didn't get eliminated on this one, right? You well, was, yes. This was. This was that because uh, this. Yeah, this was that same. That same performance because this was okay. the show that I also did the uh, with well, the episode that I also did with Aloe Black. Yes, 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 yes. I seen that one. And I guys apologize for having the screen on. It still had that going on. Um, Got that. So we got that taken care of. But anyway, we're rocking and going. Uh, so 
you were seeing the chance opportunity to be able to, well, I got American Idols came in when they got this one. <laughs> you see that? Right. Anyway, they, they, they real about it. So anyway, yeah. you got a chance to get on that stage, man. <laughs> and wow, did, I mean, you had Katy Perry. You had, uh, as you call it, Uncle, well, later on you talk about Uncle Rick, you know, Lana Richie giving you this type of props, man. What did that do to your self-confidence even in that moment? How Take us through that moment of how you felt when he finished. <laughs> so when they were telling me, so when they were talking to me, I was kind of picking up on the hints. And okay. I was trying to tell myself, okay, no, 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 no. Don't listen to what they're saying. Just yeah. listen to what they're saying. Like, just taking the whole room, taking everything, just mm. soak it all in. Be amazed. Be in wonderment. Like, stop trying to figure it out. Because yeah. in the elimination before that, Lionel was like, listen, just sing, bro. Just sing. Like, just yeah. sing. Just sing. That's all you have to do. Just sing. Don't think, don't stress, don't worry, don't just sing. Yes. So I felt like, okay, well, cool. This time I just sang. So that's all I'm going to think about. And when Katie was like, what God has for you is for you, I said, well, oh, <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> oh, man. So you, so you got to you gotta be home, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what God has for you, you're already a star. And whatever God has for you is for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, know, I know where it's going. It's going. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, no. When it happened, I just kind of made sure, like, because I had my mom there, my mm -hmm. aunt, and so, like, a couple of my cousins was there. Yes. In the audience. So, I'm like, let me just kind of, like, maintain, hold mm -hmm. my piece together and everything. Like, I don't want to, but. What, what, what you, were you, were you a little upset about it? Were you salty? Would you do, now, now, do you feel like, with the talent that rich around there? Because I'm like, yo, when you hit that note, I said, oh, dang, he in there. He is in there. Uh, but, you know, explain that. I was shocked. I mean, okay. And it's not, <laughs> it's not that the talent wasn't there. There was a lot of talent there. There yeah. really was a lot of talent there. Um, I think it really was just the fact that they were, they already had in mind what they wanted from the beginning you know what i'm saying gotcha. i mean think about who made it to the to the end for the most part it was you know people who were you know midwestern they're gonna be playing the guitars and things like that and that's cool you know whatever i do think that that was you know kind of a part of it yeah, um, yeah. but everybody was everybody that was that was there and that made it they were great they were great i i think that maybe what um what kind of held me back was i didn't really have like any drama or any you know any backstory you know, yeah, like I was, I'm just a chill guy. Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got a family that love me and back me. Like, I don't really have no drama, no mess or anything like that. Like, all I do is sing and I go to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I might go to the gym every once in a while. I'm probably going to eat a lot more than I go to the gym. But <laughs> understand, <laughs> understand. It happens. Okay. And I like music. That's all. That's, that's it. I don't yeah. have, oh, you know, I don't, I don't have no drama. I have no mess. Yeah. I was not really allowed to be in that, so I had nothing to present to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and that's, but I look at that as, as a beauty for that. Uh, now, in that moment, what, what kind of things of preparation, like going to that stage, because it seemed like, and many people don't have this ability or, or a struggle with this, that stage presence. You had a stage, once you walked up the idiot, if you were scared or feel nervous or whatever, it didn't show at all. Like you stepped on there like, yo, I'm here. Like and I I'm and I went back and listened to the song, can't nobody. I'm like, he kind of killed that. Like shot down and he kinda he kinda he kinda took it up a little bit here, you know what I'm saying? And that's kudos to you. I'm not just saying it to toot your horn, but seriously, I'm like, wow, this cat, this cat, like he did it. So like, I didn't see that elimination comment. But like I said, what is your preparation that you had coming to the stage? And, and also behind the scenes, getting into that to that place like that. Um, what made you pick that song, too? I picked the song because it was familiar to me and it felt like home. Okay. Um, and I also knew that this was going to be the episode. Like, we were, we were about to be sent. Like, after this, uh, after this elimination, everybody was going home. Okay. Well, you know, just kind of come back and like get with your family and everything like that. Spend a little gotcha. bit more time, and then maybe about, about after a month after everything that we taped had been aired, those who were still on the show would be flown back. You know, to continue the show. Yes. Uh -huh. So I chose a song because I knew that when I got home, we were gonna have a watch party and everything, and I wanted people at home to kind of be connected with 
my performance on the show, having seen me do that song here in Birmingham so much. So I just kind of wanted to have that little, you know, oh, he doing my song and he doing it on American Idol. Oh, this is the joint. He killing yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I want. I want everybody to kind of have that. Oh, I remember he sang that at my wedding. He sang that at Perfect Note. He sang that at Plum Bar. He sang that at, you know, Alabama Power. He sang that at this tailgate. You know, I wanted people yeah. who have known me to connect with me when we watched it together. And we did that, you know, at the watch party at first and 23rd. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, no, oh, yeah, that's another spot. All in the same. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. So let's move into, you also had another performance with uh, Aloy Black. Mm -hmm. And I mean, first of all, I forgot the guy that yeah. that he was the guy that sung that song. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm like, oh, I thought it was a white guy. I forgot. It is a little black on there. So you got a chance to get with him. That's kind of the purpose. Avicii. What's that? You're thinking about Avicii, who rest in peace, he did pass away. Um, but that is that yeah, that's the white guy that you're thinking about on the song. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, makes sense. So for you. Take us through that process. How did they how did they end up pairing you with him as first as well to do a duet? Honestly, I'm not exactly sure. They did okay. um there was a, a a lot of switching around and who was going to be with who. I think at one point I was supposed to be with Tony Braxton, and then they switched me to Aloe Black, and I don't think Tony could come to the show anymore. So it was kind of like, you know, a lot of switching and moving around. Okay. And so when they put me with him. I'll be honest, I really wasn't familiar with him outside of um, that song. Oh, you can tell everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 My dad loved that song. I'm the man, I'm the man, yeah, I'm the man. man. Absolutely, yeah. classic, classic. Yeah, so that's the only reason I ever, ever knew anything about him. I didn't know any other songs by him. So I had to really cram that song. I really had to like sit, mm. press myself into it and just get Go. it. And doing that with those lyrics it really made me connect with the song and i feel like it made it easier for me to connect with him once we finally met to rehearse and i had studied the song and i was in the shower and figured out how i was going to harmonize and where i was going to run and what i was going to take over and you know everything and yeah. we did he was like all right well i'm good <laughs> we don't have <laughs> so now he said let's he said let's do it let's do it one more time to record okay cool I see you when we get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it. You know what? It's, it's funny because also what they don't show. Uh, well, I didn't put on on the clip that we're gonna finally watch to show that performance. Is like you said, you weren't too familiar with that particular song and him stuff beside that. That I'm the man because he was like, okay, you like, uh, you was going through, going through rehearsal. He like, that's fine. If you forget, just just whatever you feel, just just sing it. You know, just, just yeah. let it out. He said, but. Go home and make sure you learn the lyrics, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> the moment, how was it prepping with him, man? The, the, that's a, you know, a, a Grammy-nominated uh, performer like him uh, that been on the stage. He seemed very, very the humble. Smoothest, listen, the smoothest guy you will ever meet. <laughs> so chill. He's so laid back. No pressure, no heat. Like, he just... And he, you know, he sits back, he raps as well. I don't know, a lot of people don't know, this, but he raps. Yep. Like, he, he started as a rapper before he started singing. Wow. Um, okay. Dude is talented. And he's just, he's just in his own little artist, quirky, chill, you know. Okay. Yeah. Love him. He's a great guy. <laughs> Brother, great, great. So what we got to do here now, this is, again, this is before that one audition we just, or the, the um, performance we just saw. We're going to take you there. I'm going to share the screen one more time. You guys are going to hear their performance together. Um, when I tell you, they, yeah, yeah, they do their thing. All right? So we're going to share the screen. Hopefully I can get this one right <laughs> this time with this one. We're going to get that screen shared for you guys, and we're going to go ahead and show that performance. Yeah, you guys, you guys are gonna rock with it. So let me get this up here, get that screen shared. And also, while you guys are on here, making sure you hit that like button. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hashtag E36. And if you guys care to donate to the platform for continuing to bring the great material, great sound, great quality, it's gonna be Cash App Money Sign E36 Podcast. Again, that is Cash App Money Sign E36 Podcast. Thank you. Without further ado, Alo Black and our guest, a man here, Demet Dominique. <laughs> Feeling my way through the darkness, guided by a beating heart. Wow. I can't tell where the journey will end, but 
but I know where to start. They tell me I'm too young to understand. Oh, now, brother. I say I'm caught up in a dream, but life will pass me by if I don't open up my eyes, and that's fine by me. So wake me up when it's all over. When I'm wiser and I'm older All this time I was finding myself And I didn't know I was lost So wake me up when it's all over I get the chance to travel the world, but I don't have any plans. I wish that I could stay forever this young, not afraid to close my eyes. Life's a game made for everyone, and love is the prize. So wake me up when it's all over. Touch thanks, Uncle Lionel. I said, Look out over here. This <laughs> with the Uncle Lionel on this joint. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that was that was that was real major, man. Uh, bringing <laughs> it to that platform and being able to do what you do on that major level. Take us back to that. We got to talk about that one as well. First of all, the guy seemed like this black, so like he never, like he just chilling, like he only, like he better open his mouth and it's coming out, which is, I mean, you know, I'm telling you, effortless. It's yeah. he just he just does it. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> How did it feel when this man, you know, of course he didn't know what was gonna happen, tapped him on the shoulder, said, "Hey, this here is American Idol. This is the like a Grammy nominated guy." What was going through your mind when you <laughs> was that? Re or was that rehearsed? Was that kind of planned? Oh no! Listen, I had no idea. If he was, if it was rehearsed, he rehearsed it by himself. He didn't yeah. tell me. <laughs> but when he said it to me, it was like. I just, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to think, what to feel. I was so glad to be in the moment, to be in that space. I wasn't in my head at all. I just was, mm. it was, it was great. It was great. It was great. Everything about it was great. I, and that, that we can see, you can tell like the love and the joy you had while doing it. And, and just like I said, being present in the moment. That's what it's about. You, you're in present in the moment. You're not thinking. You're just, you're just allowing the natural skills, the, the God-given talent to come out and do what it do. So now you go on to the next one. Uh, cause I had to, you know, um, Katie, she, she couldn't take it. She was, you know, a lot for words, uh, other guy, but then I brought it back to Richie. He was like, like you said, like everybody's seen, I want to mess the words up, but basically he was saying, Hey, how does it feel to know that you have the capabilities of potentially becoming a superstar? Like, boom, that's like, that's coming from one of the greatest to do it. Um, from that standpoint, can, hearing that man, like take us back to that moment as well. It really felt good, honestly. Uh, I don't say this often out loud, but really his opinion was the one on the show that meant the most to me. Mm -hmm. um, not to slight Katie nor Luke, but yeah. uh, I grew up listening to Lionel Richie, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I've yes. been listening to and singing Hello. It's been on commercials all my life. I've been yeah. listening to and singing all night long and <laughs> still on and listening to him with the Commodores and all of that. Again, I grew yes, up as yeah. a old boy. Like, I, I, I got old ears, you know what I'm saying? That's all I know. Yeah. So that's what I grew up with. So for me, it, it was like, 
literally as if an uncle or a mentor or a teacher was truly validating the work that I was doing. That's what it felt like, you know, mm-hmm. for Katie if, and, and Luke, it just felt like people who I, you know, people who I like and admire. Yeah. Were telling yeah. Me I was doing good. But somebody yeah. who, it felt like somebody who had s- sewn into me while I was growing up. Yeah. Who was, it felt like somebody who was invested in me. It felt yeah. like family, you know what I'm saying? Was telling me, hey, you are family doing a great job. Yeah. And that mattered. That mattered to me. Yes. Yes. I it like mattered. that. And so that's beautiful. So now you go move on. Now, of course, you go through the elimination process. And um, I'm not mistaken, the research that that black actually went on Twitter and basically shout out to you like, hey, when you get a ticket, man, come up here. We're going to do I want to record a song with you. Did that ever happen? What what, what happened with the situation? It did. It did. Honestly. And the song is the song is really dope. What okay. I really, well, we, I flew out there. Me and my me, uh, me and my homeboy Chris, we flew out there to meet with Lonnie, his uh, his his road manager, and and him. And we went to the studio, and we just kind of started talking about some stuff. He's like, "No, what are you feeling? What do you want to say? What's on your mind? What you know?" We were just talking, and we started writing, and we put the music and everything together. Okay. And we did it all in one day. The song is pretty dope, honestly. Okay, um, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of got like a little Bruno Mars ish kind of festival, you know, rock kind of vibe to it. It's really nice. Okay. Um, but around the time we were working on it, he actually got picked up on a tour. So mm. kind of had to postpone it and everything like that. But I still communicate with him every now and again, you know, just kind of reach okay. out to him, my connection okay. and just wish him well. Great, and that's the connection you got to you got to keep those connects, keep those relationships because that's what the game was about. It's about relationships, a lot about relationships and everything we do. Uh, with that being said, so is a is a song that officially finally get finalized, or it's never you guys never got a chance to finalize it. Not a hundred percent, but okay, we're working on it. <laughs> okay, 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 beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Well, now moving on, revolving into that, what was the the experience, the the lasting experience that you took from? that platform from that, that moment in your life that you still use to this day? I don't really have one, to be honest. And that may okay. be a problem, but it's but I'm being honest with you yeah, and saying I don't really I'm have a takeaway. I don't... <laughs> yeah, say, I, yeah. did, I did not know what to take away. Because mm. I was so confused, you know what I'm saying? How yeah. do you sit in a room with people and get glowing reviews? And then get get sent home <laughs> immediately after hearing such great things so for me it was just like okay now when i when That's i messed weird. up i know i know how to own you know what i'm saying the yeah, criticism yeah. of messing up but if i haven't messed up and i'm not getting criticism now what's going on yeah, so it's really yeah yeah like, i think i just kind of had to just cap it off as it was a great experience, experience. it was just an experience you know what that makes how long how long did the experience last? How long was it? I know on the show it's you know it's back week by week. How long were you guys actually up there? I wanna say oh uh, um, out there in LA. We were out there for three months. No, oh, well oh you said how many months? Three months in LA. For I the, was out there from like for yeah, for for Idol. I was out there for three months. Okay, wow. And it's in March, just filming for Hollywood Week up until the perform the du- uh, duet performances where I was eliminated. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah, that's what I was talking about on that. Wow. So three months of time, of course. You know, because I was like, well, I wonder how long this actually takes. You know, how long they really got to be away. Uh, yeah. So that's definitely a sacrifice. Like, you're going out there. <laughs> hey, yeah, I need to. I need to win this. I need. Oh, I need something to come. I need something to come out of this thing. You know. Oh, yeah. Um, coming back home, the initial awards. How did it change your life, uh, in a positive or negative way? Everybody was positive to me. I think I was. I was projecting disappointment that I felt other people had onto me. So I kind of went into hiding. <laughs> I, I did. It happens. I, I did gigs and everything, and I would come out, and I'd be laughing and smiling and joking, and folks would think I'd be good and everything, you know. But when I got home, you know, it was me by myself, and I'm probably curled up in the bed, or, like, for days I'm not talking to nobody or whatever, you know, just being super avoidant. You know, I was, I was... I was crushed, man. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Would you put so much into it? I can understand that. But, you know, uh, uh, so how long you say you probably took it for you to kind of be like, you know what? I'm, I'm good. Yo, this is, this wasn't, I'm tripping. I'm being my own worst critic. How long you kind of say it kind of took you to get out that funk? I have my days where I still have. I okay. Still, <laughs> I still be like, see, bro, that's why you didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's, that's why you didn't make it. <laughs> 
that sounds like a game. That sounds like a, like when I played because I played at Alabama, and you could you always think about those games that you didn't win or the Iron Bowl. Or you think about things that you just look like God, mm. like you because you can turn on YouTube right now. I can they can have a of course with everything going on with COVID nineteen. They got the Alabama games in the state of Alabama running all over the place on YouTube and every other place, college football. And just so happened, click through there. Oh, y'all really playing this game? Really? Right. Dang it. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I can, I can kind of, I can kind of relate with you on that. Now let's move to your personal. Now you get in the studio. You got a dope song that you released in 2018. This feeling, um, just super dope, man. So tell me, tell me, take me through that. And I always ask. My my guess when they have music like this, this feeling was that a personal uh, song, something you experience, or you know, some of your partners or somebody, or a little bit of both. What's up? So, I have to give all credit to that song, all credit for that song to Alvin Garrett. He is the one who wrote that song. Alvin, the bass player or a guitar. Yeah. I know he's Alvin. Yeah, that's a bass player. He, but he's also a singer. You actually, you, are you following him on Facebook? I am not, but I'm about to. You need to because he's actually got um he's got and I don't want to get it wrong. The awakening is what it's called. Okay. Uh, it's tomorrow the fifteenth, am I right? Yeah, tomorrow's the fifteenth. He's gonna be doing like a Facebook live performance taken okay. or some kind of like you know, a talk back. It's it's gonna be interactive, I know that and it's gonna be pretty nice. So definitely follow Alvin but he wrote the song This Feeling and okay. uh, he hit me up about it. Was like, you know, hey, you know, how do you feel about recording? You know, let's work it together, do some music. And I was like, well, sure, because we already had a work relationship. I performed, you know, with him on some of his gigs. Gotcha. Um, so that's that's been great always. So we got in the studio, and well, first I heard the song, and I was, you know, you know, just listening to it, and I got into it or whatever. We got in the studio, and he was like, man, just he kept having to tell me to, you know, go ahead and be aggressive. So once <laughs> I, <laughs> so I got in the studio, and I got it behind that mic, and. We laid those harmonies and we started, you know, doing the, you know, the edits and everything like that. I think we did it in, I don't know how many days it took us. It really wasn't that long, though, honestly. It was really, mm. it was really quick. Like, his direction in the studio was great. Mm -hmm. His energy in the studio was great. When when he told me what he needed, it was easy for me to give it to him, you know. And I'm I'm a quick study. I yeah. love doing a studio. So, you know, tell okay. me what to do and I got you. <laughs> like, that's, that's <laughs> fun to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's exciting. Are you a person? Are you a person that can stay in the studio for hours? Just, just all day, or he's like, all hey, day. what's that? All day. I don't want to go nowhere else. I can stay there all day. Okay. I can Uber eat my food. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm straight. Like, don't we don't go where for what? I don't. I'm good. What are we working on? <laughs> Let's sing. Let's do yeah, something. I got a couch. I need a couch. I may lay down for a little bit. Get back up. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's set up. It's yeah. No why? And I and I have like I have done that before too. <laughs> so that's cool. But yeah, we did that and we released it. And honestly, the song, as far as I know, the song is still doing great. Like I, I checked the numbers. It's still getting plays. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, we we it, it's definitely like I listen to it. I'm like, oh, okay, yo. I, I, when I first heard, it, I'm like, oh, this is dope. I heard of Apple Music. Then mm -hmm. I started. I say, let me go to YouTube and see what else he got going. He got a video, maybe, perhaps, or whatever. And boom, video. <laughs> so, with that being said, we're also going to kind of give a little clip of the video of uh, this this feeling. But you guys can check it out. You guys can hear it. Make sure you also go on there and follow him and subscribe yourself. Get on it. Get on it, man. We got to support our independent artist because he ain't gonna probably be there for long you know what i'm saying so take advantage of it uh support <laughs> get him know him now so you gotta be like hey yo you remember me no no <laughs> i remember you when i didn't yeah i know you now somewhat but anyway here we right. go without further ado is <laughs> when his first ep dropped which is this feeling dominique check us out here it is Said I got this feeling No, I can't shake this feeling No I Said you got me Thinking about where you've been Cause you won't answer When I call you, babe I got this vision Of somebody touching all on your skin there's so much pressure 
on my heart, babe It's three in the morning And I can't help wondering My imagination is driving me wild You made me a promise That you could be trusted them out my man this feeling dominique on the once or two one of his first music videos on here uh this, again this was released in 2018 correct yeah 2018 2018 uh so then i got it here and i mean, made it happen so kind of give us the information about that uh who was your leading lady uh who was also um the other guy that was kind of trying to take her away if you remember so this is gonna sit, this is gonna be so bad. I don't remember. I'm bad with names. Okay. <laughs> I see a face. I know that I know you. So everybody in the video, their faces are familiar, but I can't. I can't remember anybody's name except for the other guy who's in the video. His name is Jamal Joseph, and I remember him because he's also the director of the video. Like it was oh, his. Okay. He listened to the song. He put the concept together. He mapped it out. He dressed us and everything. He did all of that. You know what I'm saying? He choreographed the dancers that was in there as well in the full video. Um, okay. All of that. And he's actually, uh, I was blessed to be able to work with him because of a connection to a mutual friend we have. Yes. Jamal also did some choreography for Beyonce's Coachella performance. Oh. Stepping and things like that. Nice. So, yes. Yes. Right. Okay. So it, was a, it was a real blessing to be able to have him on my team for on that video, really to be on his team. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Birmingham, Alabama, doing what it do, bringing, bringing out the stars, you know, the hidden gems and stuff. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, you got that taken care of. You you did that, uh, get your single, got that out, this feeling, like I said, still rocking. Now you had, not too long ago, you just released your album. We can base the album, uh, yeah. Norman Drive, late yeah. part of 2019, man. 
like some of the tracks. Alive is a very major one that's, that's really <laughs> continuing to trend right now. Uh, I think I just don't know. So kind of take us through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on you. I got you. You listen to it. Okay, you really listen. I got you. I got you. No, I'm, 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 a, I'm a music buff. I can't really sing like that, but I'm a music buff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I respect the arts. I love the arts. So with that being said, it's Norman Drive. Explain to me what that, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm sure there got to be a street name or something. Maybe his hometown. What, what's up with that? How'd you come up with that concept? So Norman Drive is the street basically that I grew up on. Um, <laughs> I live, me and my dad lived in an apartment complex called Stonebrook, which okay. is 1525 Norman Drive, I think it is. Okay. And then, We've got the high school that I went to, which is North Clayton High School. It's on Norman Drive as well. Um, my elementary school is like at the intersection of Norman Drive and okay. West Hill, GW North Cut. Like a lot of a lot of my life events, you know what I'm saying? A lot of firsts, a lot of lasts happen you know, <laughs> in that area, you know? Yeah. So yeah. with it being like my, my first project that I kind of spearheaded and, you know, shout out to Gap Tooth and Elias and Zoo and Dolo and everybody else who was a part of the project. Yes. Um, who just was Isaiah Fogel and who, who else am I? I feel like I'm forgetting so many people. I hope I'm not. But um, it was my first time saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Yes. Can you guys help me out? Let's work together. And we did. We, we stayed up all night sometimes. Uh -huh. Oh, God knows how long and how far. And we were working grinding yeah yeah guys just and, and on your label that's my ad dominique this is actually it has your label on there don't i said oh my <laughs> man got his own, own label yeah I, had, I couldn't leave that out there as well uh when did you start launch your, your label when i put that album out <laughs> okay. okay i am my own artist yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you know what? What for you? What prompts like? Because I see a lot of artists doing it now. Hey, I'm doing. My, they're just basically like, hey, I ain't waiting on nobody else. I'm doing my own thing, my own label. Boom, making moves. I don't know how to get access to a bigger one. You know what I'm saying? So why not be the big one that I want to be? Why there not? Why there not? You, there you go. Why, that's a good. <laughs> why not? I mean, what else? You know. Uh, so no, shout out to that man. It, it was that was a great experience and seeing that happen. Now you guys are going, and I know that song is continuing to really have to really breathe itself right now online because of, you know, COVID-19, not really being able to do performances and stuff and get out there and, and kind of tour. Did, did some of the plans that you had uh, set up in order to push it, tell me how that has been, how, how that's been affecting how you, you kind of navigating through that this time as well. Um, it's really been difficult. A lot of, I, I lost quite a sum of money as soon as COVID-19 started happening. I can believe. <laughs> I can believe. Uh, Part-time, I work at a hotel. So okay. I worked at a hotel part-time. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, we were losing guests. We lose guests. We lose hours. Mm. So they actually had to shut down the property because of COVID-19. We, we didn't have any guests coming in, so we couldn't work. Wow. So I lost, I basically lost my job. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then... I started losing my gigs back to back to back mm. to back to back. I'm talking about like stacks on stacks on stacks. Just, yeah. you know, of course I thank God for deposits, but yeah, you know, yeah, this, yeah. this was gone. I'm like, Jesus, trips I just couldn't like that. Right, you know, yeah. Yeah. I had things planned. But um, it, it did it did kind of, you know, stop my, my plans to promote uh, Norman Drive, but it, it made me, it made me kind of take a, a heavier look into my actual performances and like how I perform. So that's why I've been really so much focusing on doing the live performances and the, the virtual performances so I can see, well, what are people seeing when I'm performing? Mm -hmm. I know how I feel when I'm performing and I've watched shows, but when yes. it's like, when it is happening right there, what yes. does that look like? And mm -hmm. that's why I was so glad to be able to, be able to put that live show together. And it's, it's really been working, honestly. The cash yeah. apps have been great. Thank you all. Sponsorship yeah. has been great. I, I had a chance to have sponsorship from AIDS Alabama and um, also the uh, nice the vaccine research clinic and, you know, a few lawyers in the city and a few uh, local businesses as well. Yeah. So, okay. great for all that. Blessing, blessing. You know, that's right. Hey, that's right. You see, the cash out, we need them. <laughs> we need them. They don't come easy doing all this. A lot of equipment here. Again, Cash out E36 podcast. No, but seriously. Right. <laughs> so that's beautiful to see that, man, to be able to do take something that was, like I said, definitely unseen, unforeseen, unplanned, and 
take it and, and, and use it to your advantage to what you can, like the virtual training, the virtual concerts you've been doing, and being able to, like I said, continue to grow and develop. Because I can take you, I can be with you, because we were set to film a major film, actually in Birmingham, okay. uh, to set the film, Bring and I, a guy, basically do a Dolph Lundgren, could do a major movie. I got cast for him, like, yes, I'm in there. Right. 19, two weeks before, boom, shut it down. <laughs> oh lord jesus whatever but you know they have got good with the virtual uh auditions and things of that nature so like i said a lot of innovation a lot of creativity has also been birthed out of the situation right it will be so beautiful thing about that i gotta ask you i'm gonna get also gotta get into some of your personal business uh-oh What's on? What's up, what's going on with the, with your with the relationship? For are you are you you single man? Are you are you dating? Or what what you got going on? I'm dating. Excuse okay, me. I've been locked down for like two years now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so okay, gotcha. You know, Kevin, yeah, you know, just no, 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 wait now, no, 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 not like I'm ashamed or not like that. I really am trying to make sure that y'all can't see this head. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yeah. So what we gonna do, everybody? Again, I know you guys are enjoying what you're hearing. I'm loving this. We're gonna actually get a chance. I know you guys heard him on the recordings. You heard him on the recordings. You heard all that. <laughs> but. So you can be like, hey, is that is that auto tune? Is that just TV edited? What is that? We're gonna give a chance. Have my man gonna break us with a acapella, acapoco <laughs> here to finish us off, take us off of here on the E36 on the filter platform. So without further ado, Dominique, go ahead and do what you do. All right, let's get it going. You said you wanted that major, right? I want yes, I want that major. <laughs> yes, yes. I found love. In you, and I learned to love me too. Never have I felt that I could be all that you see. It's like our hearts having entwined into the perfect harmony. And this is why I love you. Oh, this is why I love you, because you love me, you love me. And I <laughs> that is, you guys heard it here live on the E36 Unfiltered platform. <laughs> man, it, it is not our tune. It is not editing. This is real, raw, oh, skill, me. talent right there. Straight <laughs> from the vocals. You know, he that, he didn't sing. He sang. He <laughs> sang on that one, man. But I know I, I truly appreciate that, man. Exercising your gift. I, I, I admonish that highly, highly because I'm like, oh, I wish. I wish. So <laughs> if people can do it like that, man, it is it's straight number of respect and salute to that, man. So I want to give a chance to get that man. So you guys, hey, you guys, he's going to have, he, I'm, I'm saying that he's going to have some virtual concerts and lives going on. You hear it. It's, it. it's just not be a waste of your time. You're going to hear this level of quality as he sings. So get on his stuff. I'm going to be joining on his stuff to watch it and just sit there and see what he do doing his thing. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and close this thing out. Uh, first, I want to make sure we get information on how we can follow you on social media, all the platforms so they can support you and follow you. Yes, you can find me on all digital platforms, all social media platforms at Legit Dominique. That's at Legit Dominique. I'm going to change my name right now. I didn't even know how to do that, to be honest. <laughs> Top right, uh, top right corner. You should be able to hit it and rename. Yeah, let's figure it out. Look at, look at this. Come on, technology at look work. Look at God doing it, doing it, do. So you guys, again, I'm not even gonna mess it up and repeat it. But you got there. It is at legit Dominique. That's your, that's the Instagram. That's Instagram. That's Twitter. That's my Facebook artist page. You know what I'm saying? All of that's everything there. You can also okay. find me that way on uh, when you're looking up my music. You can find me legit Dominique as well. Just you know. Yes. Look me up, please. All the major <laughs> absolutely. Apple Music, so Spotify, all the different stuff. 
all digital platforms, okay. iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, right. Apple Music. You can you listen, you can even put my songs on your Instagram stories and your Facebook stories. Trust me, I do it all the time. Oh, you, can do it. It. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. I got it. Love it. Love it, man. So anyway, without further ado, man, and once again, I will tell you, I completely appreciate you staying here on the, coming here on the E36 Unfiltered platform, sharing your story, sharing your experience, inspiring someone else. And I always like to leave with a final thought. Um, I would say you guys always believe in yourself. Always, always, always believe in yourself. If nobody else believes in you, you believe in yourself. You be the, 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 the fuel to your own dreams. And you can make it happen. I'm gonna leave my man with the final thoughts he have for his guests. Yeah, I'm gonna put you on the spot with that one. Go and get some inspiration <laughs> before we leave out on a platform. A final thought. Never let a freshman take your spot. <laughs> and we're gonna leave it off right there. Again, one more time, you guys. E36 Unfiltered Podcast here. The special guest, Dominique Posey, American Idol, season 16. Hey, Continue on with greatness here. We thank you for your time. E36 Unfiltered, we out of here. Thank you. E36 Unfiltered, a.k.a. the Unfiltered Room with Mr. E. Gray. Introducing all the latest names and the latest news. How this take, he the new face, yet a new sound. But keep it old school. Raw interviews from local athletes, even digging off and entertainment too. Own style, he got his own lane. It's Unfiltered, dog, but keep it raw, man. New content to keep the people ready. E36, no Jerome, baby. It's real dialogue and real conversations. You keep it real.